So even if you are thinking, I can't step into God's will because of everything that happened before me, I'm telling you because of Jesus, you can step into the fullness of what it is that God has for your future. I do, 100%. And I, I'm thinking of um, the women watching this right now. I, I love what you said. I just want to uh, kind of riff a little bit off that story with David. Um, you know, we, we live in a world where so often we think, man, I've got to have the right education. Or I've got to have the right qualifications. I've got to have the right connections. Or even you're watching this and you're thinking um, subconsciously, God, I'm, I'm really encouraged by listening to these stories, but they're the kind of women that God's going to speak to. And, and it's not me on the other side of the screen. I'm sitting in my living room. Um, you know, my life is a mess. But I just want you to know, you know, when David um, went and turned up to the battle, don't forget get. He turned up with a couple of sandwiches for the boys, for his brothers. He was not even invited to the battle. He wasn't the cool one. I mean, you've got King Saul, you've got Eliab, his brother. I mean, all the cool boys are there. And it seems like all the cool kids are invited to the battle, but all the cool kids are freaking out. And David, who has just been, David, with, you know, um, in the presence of the Lord, worshiping God, being obedient and faithful. And here is the challenge. The anointing, and you know, just before that story, the when Saul came to anoint David to be king of Israel, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. He was anointed just in the chapter before, 1 Samuel 16. And the very first verse of 1 Samuel 17 says, And that day the Spirit of the Lord left Saul. So what do you do when like you feel this sense, but somebody else has still got the position, the title, they're part of everything, but the spirit of the Lord's not on them. David didn't get on Twitter and start arguing about everything. David went back to his sheep, back to worshiping the Lord, back to being faithful, knowing that he carried the presence and the anointing of God, even if everyone else that had seen it was no, was not in that moment going to affirm it. And then he brought his lunch. His dad said, go take some lunch to your brothers. And he did. But because he was then operating out of his anointing, he didn't need position, title. He didn't need Saul's armor. He didn't need anyone to recognize him in the authority that God had given him. So you in your home, if you're married with your children, in your family, in your workplace, in your school, in your college, you're anointed there. You don't need to be me. You don't need to be Robin. You don't need to be Laurie. You don't need to be Nona. You don't need to be Sheila. You, within your realm and the anointing that God's placed on you, um, you can, in Jesus' name, take down any Goliath. Absolutely. You don't need to run a global anti-trafficking organization. You don't need to, you know, have Facebook call you. Within your realm, your right. sphere, God has anointed you. And in Jesus' name, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives on the inside of you and me. So you can, through the power of God, take down Goliaths and walk into the fullness of what God's will is in that moment um, for your life. But if we take the world's method, I've got to have position, I've got to have title, I've got to have connections, I've got to have, you know, the right Instagram account, I've got to have a blue check mark, I've got, listen, you will be paralyzed forever. And I'm here to tell you, no, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the Man. dead lives on the inside of you. And so you don't have to wait for, Man, one day I'm going to do God's will. I'm like, right. you could be doing it every day, every day, Absolutely. right where you are now. You know, I think most apologists or evangelists would know that probably the biggest uh, challenge for people um, even coming to faith in Christ is going, if, if God was a good God and God had a perfect will for your life, why would he allow suffering? Why would he allow pain? Why would he allow heartache? And I think um, that's a very real thing. And ultimately, and uh, you know, I want to be upfront, there is just so much we don't understand. Um, mm. And you know, I'm finite, God is infinite. And mm. people have written a lot of books and I just finished you know, a four year postgrad degree. And I thought even after doing all of that, I've read a lot of books and still nobody really knows. And I think that's right because how could we with our finite minds understand an infinite God? What do I know? I know from scripture, again, this comes back down to what do I know about the character of God? I do know 
that in Psalm 119, it says that God is good and that God does good. Romans 8, 28, it says that God will work all things together for my good and for his glory. So these things I know about yeah. the character of God. So can I trust him when I can't trace him or understand? And I think that's where it's, you know, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. There are things in my own life. You know, I was um, the, the victim of sexual abuse for 12 years. Well, there's nothing good about that. That, that there is a, it, abuse is never okay. There is nothing okay. Now, has God redeemed parts of my story um, and allowed my past to give help give other people a future and hope and find freedom? Yes. Does that mean I would ever want that to happen to me? I'm like, no, uh, there could have been a better way for me to help um, people. I, I, I would never want to go through that again. But I remember talking to Joyce, Mama Joyce, all roads go back to Jesus and then Mama Joyce. But Mama Joyce um, said to me once, Christine, and it really helped me. She said, I never wish that anything, that all the abuse that happened to her, horrific as it was, like all of us, any survivor of um, any form of abuse, she said, I never, ever would wish that that happened. She said, but I've stopped wishing that it didn't happen. I, I've stopped living my life in this place of if only that didn't happen, if only that didn't happen. And and it was it's like a way they're going, I can see how God has used it for good. I still don't understand how that happened in my life or why it happened. There's nothing good about it. We we only put it down to that we live in a, a fallen world. Bad things happen to good people. Our God is good. Um, God allowing something is very different to God causing something. And so we have to trust in the goodness and the faithfulness of God and God's ability to redeem every pain, every hurt uh, in this life and in the life to come, where sometimes we don't see it all this side of eternity, um, but we hold on to the promise. Um, and so my a thought with all of that is I know a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, especially look at this sort of post-pandemic world and look at the, you know, it looks like there's war and rumours of war everywhere and there's, um, you know, economic challenges everywhere and there is environmental challenges and the world has gone cray-cray. Wherever you're watching this, the whole world's gone cray-cray. And you're like, if God is good, how can his will, how can he let all this happen? And, um, you know, what it comes down to is faith. And and that's really what um, I'm here to tell you, that my I've had bad things happen to me. I've had a lot of challenges from the time I was left in a hospital, unnamed and unwanted when I was born, to sexual abuse, to growing up in the poorest zip code in my state in Australia, to being very marginalised because of my ethnicity and gender. Well, in today's uh, climate, um, you know, I fit every category, tick, 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 and I could live my life um, as a victim of my past or I could, and I could spend my whole life frustrated, this side of eternity, why did this happen? And it's not fair and it's, and it's not fair and it's not just and it's not right, but I'm not going to get answers for all of that and blaming God is not in any way going to move um, it forward. But I know that all the promises of God are in Christ Jesus, yes and amen. So what I don't understand, I place at the feet of the cross. And then I allow the resurrection life of Christ to bring transformation, to redeem my past, give me a fresh hope today, and to help me step into the future that he has for me. So listen, I am a bit old school, but I don't believe that your history has to define your destiny. I do believe the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross can take even even all the bad things that have happened to you, redeem them for your good and for his glory. And then you can step into the fullness of your purpose. So the plans and the purpose that God had for me from before the beginning of time were not thwarted by abandonment, abuse, adoption, marginalization, because the uh, the redemptive power of the, the blood that was shed at the cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago, what Jesus did for me was bigger than what anybody else did to me. And all the promises of God are in Christ Jesus, yes and amen. So even if you are thinking, I can't step into God's will because of everything that happened before me, I'm telling you because of Jesus, you can step into the fullness of what it is that God has for your future. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.